Hi there, it's Mark with a Lightroom tutorial about black and white. Now I like black and white, I do a lot of my street photography in black and white, and I have a number of YouTube tutorials on black and white processing, various tricks, tips, traps and techniques. However, we're going to be look more closely at colour to do our black and white processing this time. Now I have covered some of these topics a little bit or possibly scattered them throughout a few videos. So I'm gonna try and concentrate them all into this one relatively short video. But first, can I show you this in Photoshop? Here we have a blue square. I've added some yellow. I feel like the Partridge family here, if you're old enough to remember the beginning of the Partridge family. And I've got a magenta down there and I've got a green and I've got an orangey type colour. So clearly some vibrant and diverse colours. Now this is a hue and saturation layer and what this allows you to do is to change the saturation of a layer. The slide in the middle is purely to do with saturation. If I remove the saturation from this picture what happens? Now that is why desaturating a picture is not the same as black and white. You have to be mindful of the colors that you are using, accentu accentuating or muting while you're doing your black and whites. And that's what we're gonna have a look at now. I'm gonna play the titles, take about six seconds or so, just enough for anyone new to the channel to click on that subscribe button. And if at any time through this you think it's worthwhile, give it a like, YouTube knows this likes. And I'm really pleased that after my last video, I've shot through the 1000 subscribers. I was about 900 or something. And now I'm well on my way, ish, to 2000. Well, with a bit of poetic license. I'll see you in about six seconds and we'll, we'll, we'll unravel this mystery and we'll get cracking. So here we are in sunny Lightroom with, with two pictures to work on, which I forgot to tell you in the introduction are available to download from my website. They're all in a little zip file and that zip file link is down below in the video notes. So if you want to press pause and go and collect those and load them into Lightroom, we will all wait patiently here while you do that. Okay, assuming you're back and we are unpaused, let's continue. Now clearly in the introduction, I crafted some of those colours to exaggerate the effect, making all four colours just disappear altogether. It doesn't happen as bad in day-to-day -day pictures, but it does happen. Let's develop this first picture, D for our develop module. And let us zoom in, just to kind of show this happening. So here we are, I'm now going to desaturate this picture. Notice in particular how the colours here, they were the oranges and blues. That was my backslash key, by the way, that shows the unedited to edited version. You can see how the orange and blues are mixing together there. Let's reset that saturation. And now let's just click on the black and white button. Notice how there's far more contrast and definition here. We haven't run into the issue where because of the luminosity values of the colours being similar, they start to blend together when you take the colour away. So clearly you can see it does have an effect to greater or lesser degree. Some instances you might not even notice it and you might be totally fine with desaturating. On that though, when I press the little black and white button, did you notice I can't now adjust vibrance and saturation? Beforehand, we're going to adjust vibrance and saturation up and down. Afterwards, it takes it away. Before, we have a colour mixer here, which has got hue, saturation and luminance for each of the eight bands. So that's the version of the colour, the saturation of the colour and the brightness or darkness of the colour. As soon as you click black and white, it becomes black and white. It's still banded by those colours but you no longer get a mix of hue, saturation and luminance. Which brings me to my next tip. 
I want these sliders to cover a much greater range to give me more flexibility in what I do. I want the dynamic range to be much more. So let's look at what yellow does. Notice how that's getting towards black. It's not black at one end and it's getting towards white but it's not white at the other end. Neither of those are a good edit for me. However, I just wanted to point them out. If before we start that journey, I oversaturate the picture by popping into calibration. Your calibration might be the bottom, mine second. I've put it second because I use it quite a lot, subtly and dramatically in my pictures. I've linked to a video above now which tells you all about calibration. But let's just bump up the saturation in the reds, greens and blue primary channel. Now let's click to that black and white again. And now let's go back to that yellow slider. That is much darker. That's far blacker. And that is much whiter. So somewhere around there, if my memory serves me correctly, was where we hit the threshold previously. But we can go further. So what we've effectively done by oversaturating before black and white conversion is to give the dynamic range of each and every one of these sliders more room to work. Okay, so let's reset this, this and this. Let's go back to color. Let's oversaturate, go to black and white, go to the yellow slider, and it's not as black. And it's not as white. The reason being is that calibration is a much lower level, far more fundamental approach to changing the individual values of red, green and blue in every pixel. You'll find that out if you watch the other video. But for now, if you just take it on face value, that it does that. So reset saturation and let's go again. So. What other ways do we have of doing black and white? Because it isn't all this button. You have got, in no particular order, presets. And there are a whole bunch of presets. All of these. Let's just type in black just to shortcut to some of them. 24 for starters. Yes, they're marked portrait, but there's nothing to say you can't use a portrait black and white preset on a non-portrait picture. And the beauty of presets is you can just roll over them and it will show you on the picture what they look like. You can click to apply it and then you can use this slider to dilute it or accentuate it. So you can roll it back and roll it forward. So you've got a lot of granular detail having chosen a preset. Also in choosing a preset you get to see what other changes have been made. So this particular preset has altered basics and you can see the alterations there. It's altered tone curve, you can tell because the eye is lit up. It's altered things in the black and white channels, you can see that. And it's altered things in colour grading. So you could go in and work out what it has done. It's pointing to where it has made the changes. Let's reset this again. Let's open our basic panel. Let's pick another one from down here. It's made a change to texture, but this time it's got tone curve, black and white, and color grading. And as you go through them, those little eyes will light up or not, telling you which ones contain, which panels contain adjustments. So you can learn from a preset. Let's click reset on the preset. Let's close that up. We already know we can do saturation. We already know that we can click the black and white button, but also in profiles, you've got a series of black and whites. And again, you can hover over them. Yours might not look like this. By default, it's a grid. So you can get to see them, but because they reflect immediately the picture on the left, much quicker than a preset does, by the way, when you hover over them, I don't bother wasting that space. I'd rather just see the list of ones I've got 
and hover over them. See the one I want, that one, and again, I've got this to back off some of those changes or apply some of it more strongly. The difference here, if we jump back to our panels, none of the eyes are lit up. Now, a profile does not make changes on your sliders for you. It embeds it in before it hands control to you on these panels. A preset is a replay of what's in the panels, so you do get to see what's there. Okay, so black and white, black and white button, profiles, presets, desaturation works on some pictures. Let's now take some of that and do an edit. When I do do a black and white edit, I generally do a normal edit first, which sometimes starts with auto, which I kind of like there. Yeah, I'm just going to take a little bit more on the sky. So use my local adjustment brushes, choose sky. The selection will probably leak into the bridge and leak into the towers. It has, as you can see, the purple there. I put a link to a video above now, which tells, which, which tells you how you improve on these selections. But I'm going to leave as is for the moment. And I'm just going to back out some of the highlights and, and put a little bit more clarity in, which is a contrast of texture. I've got a video to that too, which I will link to above now. Happy-ish with that. Let's now stick a profile on. I'm going to go with that one because I like how more se much more separation there is between the highlights and the blacks, the whites and the blacks. Do I want to exaggerate that anymore? Or back it off? No, I'm going to leave it roughly where it was. Well, exactly where it was at 100% and close. Do I want to play with any other elements of the picture? Yes, I do want some clarity in there. I'm liking what it's doing to all the window framing and, and stanchions on the bridges and such. And now let's jump into the meat of things and go and play with our black and white sliders, which are enabled by the colour. Can you remember what the colours were? If you don't, our friend the backtash key will take you back to the original. We can see that the time bridge is a muted blue. The swing bridge has got some red on, which we want to bring out. There's also some yellows in that time bridge as well. Okay, I definitely want to do something with the reds. Now, the question is, do I want to lighten the reds like so? I'll zoom in. Like so. Or do I want to bring the red value down and make them more contrasting? I think I probably want to bring them down a little bit. What about uh, the high level bridge? Well, I can't remember what colour that was, so let's just click on the scrubber slider or whatever that's called. It now becomes an, a picker. So if I put that on the bridge, click and bring my cursor downwards, it's orange. Yes, look, the orange slider is moving on the right. And if I push it up, I'm lightening it. I think I'm going to lighten it, but I'm going to be careful because there's a lot of that colour elsewhere in the picture and zoom back out. I'm going to put a crop on this. I don't like this format um, when I'm doing landscape -y things and cityscapes. So let's do R for our recrop tool. I'll make it a little bit, well, a little bit more, quite a bit more letterboxy. To there. Are we straight? No, we're not straight. Needs a little bit there I now think we're straight or do I just have my head on one side okay this is looking better I want to increase the contrast in the middle and lower it to the outside so let's see if I can brighten the outside with an inverse vignette so not that way the traditional way you'd add in vignette but just by brightening up it glows a little bit too much in the corner for my liking but I will leave it there for now I'm going to use a radial filter, a radial gradient, sorry, and drag it somewhere like so. Possibly bring it in a bit more. Too far. Move it over so I can grab the handle. There we go. Put that somewhere in the middle and then invert it. And now with the feather on maximum. I'm going to lift the exposure a little bit, which is better than that vignette in the corner was. 
some of the highlights and the whites and lift some of the shadows so I'm starting to create that white look around the outside and in the middle I'm actually going to copy and invert this so duplicate and invert it so we're back to it being the middle piece and on that middle piece I'm actually going to bring exposure down a little bit but put more clarity in and possibly bring the shadows down so I'm kind of tunneling us in with it, a bit of light control and and that's it I think I will just leave that one there so we've seen how we've uh, used the color sliders once we've got a black and white we've seen how we can use the black and white button we've seen how we can use presets over here profiles over here and how saturation before you do an edit can give you more dynamic range in each of the color sliders if you like this please give it a thumbs up if you have not done already and if you want to give it a second thumbs up phone a friend get them to watch it get them to give me the thumbs up instead i'm out of here i will do another one of these very shortly bye for now